Welcome to this video where we will be looking at the mechanism of action of ipotropium bromide. Ipotropium bromide is an anticholinergic bronchodilator, meaning it binds to a specific type of cholinergic receptor and inhibits its activation, leading to bronchodilation. Cholinergic receptors are those that are activated when they bind the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. They are located on various cells throughout the body and are part of the parasympathetic nervous system. Cholinergic receptors are the target site for multiple treatments in various medical fields, such as cardiology and respiratory medicine. There are two types of cholinergic receptors, called nicotinic and muscarinic named after the drugs that work on them. So nicotinic receptors respond to acetylcholine and nicotine. Muscarinic receptors respond to acetylcholine and muscarin. Ipotropium bromide targets muscarinic receptors located on the bronchial smooth muscle, so it is also known as an anti-muscarinic. So let's look at the mechanism of action of ipotropium bromide. There are five types of muscarinic receptors, which include M1, M2, M3, M4 and M5. Muscarinic type 3 receptors can be found on bronchial smooth muscle cells, as well as exocrine glands. It is these muscarinic type 3 receptors which are the target site of ipotropium bromide. When acetylcholine is released, it will bind to its target receptor. In this case, the muscarinic type 3 receptor. When these receptors are stimulated, it causes an intracellular cascade to take place, which we will discuss shortly. This intracellular cascade causes a rise in intracellular calcium, which causes muscle contraction by increasing actin and myosin crossbridge formation. Therefore, muscarinic 3 receptors cause bronchial constriction when the neurotransmitter acetylcholine is bound to it. Ipotropium bromide is a competitive inhibitor of acetylcholine, binding to the muscarinic type 3 receptor and inhibiting acetylcholine from exerting an effect. This will then lead to relaxation of bronchial smooth muscle, leading to an increased airway diameter and easier passage of air, making it easier to breathe. Now let's look at the intracellular cascade that takes place when acetylcholine binds to a muscarinic type 3 receptor, so that we can understand how ipotropium bromide works and the pathway in which it is inhibiting. In understanding the clinical application of ipotropium bromide, this part isn't important, so feel free to skip ahead. Timestamps are in the description below. Muscarinic type 3 receptors are seven transmembrane receptors which mean they pass through the membrane and do so seven times. Each of these seven subunits that pass through the cell wall are called alpha helices, and an alpha helice is how we describe a coiled shape of an amino acid. These seven transmembrane receptors are also known as G-protein coupled receptors. As the name implies, these are coupled with G proteins that are located within the cytoplasm of the cell. These G proteins have the ability to bind guanosine triphosphate, known as GTP, and to guanosine diphosphate, known as GDP. In the inactive form, these G proteins are bound to guanosine diphosphate. G proteins consist of three subunits labelled alpha, beta and gamma, which are just the first three letters of the Greek alphabet. And guanosine diphosphate 
is bound to the alpha subunit. So now we have an understanding of the G-protein coupled receptor structure, let's look at the intracellular cascade when the neurotransmitter acetylcholine binds to the muscarinic 3 receptor. When acetylcholine binds to the muscarinic 3 receptor, it causes a conformational change in the receptor's shape. This conformational change will cause the GQ protein to detach from the guanosine diphosphate and bind guanosine triphosphate. The G protein is now active and the alpha subunit will now disassociate from the beta and gamma subunits and will bind to and activate a membrane bound protein called phospholipase C. Phospholipase C is an enzyme that breaks down phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-diphosphate, which we denote as PIP2, and produces two second messengers from the breakdown of PIP2. And remember that a second messenger is simply an intracellular signaling molecule that causes a physiological change within a cell. These second messengers are inositol triphosphate, also denoted as IP3, and diacylglycerol, denoted as DAG. And these two second messengers are achieved by the cleavage of inositol phospholipids. Inositol triphosphate in turn triggers the release of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum within the bronchial smooth muscle cell. This calcium will then bind with a protein called calmodulin and creates a calcium calmodulin kinase and a kinase is an enzyme that wants to phosphorylate. The other second messenger that is produced from the breakdown of phosphatidyl inositol 45 diphosphate is diacylglycerol, which activates protein kinase C. The calcium calmodulin kinase and protein kinase C will cause an increase of calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, as well as the opening of calcium channels on the cell membrane. This will increase the activity of the myosin light chain kinase and therefore cross-bridge formation of actin and myosin, leading to smooth muscle contraction. The binding of ipotropium bromide to the muscarinic 3 receptor will inhibit this pathway, leading to smooth muscle relaxation. So now we have an understanding of how ipotropium bromide works, let's look at its clinical application. Ipotropium bromide is used in respiratory medicine to relieve the symptoms of an asthma attack or other conditions associated with reversible airway obstruction, such as exacerbations of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It is often used in conjunction with other rescue medication, such as salbutamol. Ipotropium bromide should be used cautiously in patients with closed angle glaucoma as it can cause an increase in intraocular pressure. Adverse effects of ipotropium bromide include nausea, dry mouth, tachycardia, paroxysmal chest tightness and a cough. To recap, ipotropium bromide is an anticholinergic drug used in respiratory medicine to cause bronchodilation. Ipotropium bromide is also known as an anti-muscarinic because it selectively binds to muscarinic type 3 receptors, which can be located in the bronchial smooth muscle. Ipotropium bromide is a competitive inhibitor of acetylcholine, inhibiting parasympathetic bronchoconstriction. This leads to bronchodilation and an increase in airway diameter, making it easier to breathe. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. 
Be sure to check out our other videos on pharmacology and if there are any topics you would like us to cover, then please leave a comment in the comment section below.